In this lesson, you will learn the following. How to test multiple pages. We are going to teach you how to write tests that span across multiple pages, which is incredibly common when writing end-to-end -end tests. How to organize your spec files and tests by using context. We'll also give you opportunities to practice the concepts you have learned in this lesson. If you get stuck, the answers are provided. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to write tests that span multiple pages. This is extremely common when writing end-to-end -end tests. On the home page, there is a courses section that contains each course and all of the lessons contained within that course. The Get Started button links to the course's landing page. Now let's write a test for each of these Get Started buttons to verify that they link to the correct course page. Before we begin writing our test, I wanted to take a moment to show you how you can better organize your tests by using context. Currently, all the tests within this spec file are related to the hero section of our homepage. We are now about to write tests for an entirely different section of our homepage, the courses section. Context allows us to group related tests together, making our spec file easier to read. Let me update the spec file to use context and you'll see what I mean. As you can see, by using context, we can wrap all of the tests related to the Heroes section of our homepage together. This makes it quick and easy for anyone reading the spec file to know that these tests are for the Heroes section of our homepage. Then, if we look at the Cypress app, we will see that our tests are not only are they still passing, but notice how our tests are nested underneath the Heroes section in the command log, which is the name we gave to our context. For each new context we create, our test will be nested underneath it, which makes it easier to understand what is going on within our spec file. Now that we understand how context works, let's create a new context for the courses section of our homepage. Next, we will create a new test for the first course, testing your first Next.js application. Remember that if we only want a specific test to run, we can add only after it. Now we need to get the Get Started button. However, there's a slight problem. The Get Started buttons do not have a data test attribute on them. However, each course on the homepage has a parent element with a data test attribute on it. We can tell Cypress to find elements that are within another element by using the find command. To put it another way, we can limit the scope that Cypress looks for an element by using the find command. This command will tell Cypress to only look for an element that is inside of another element. So we can tell Cypress to find all the anchor tags within our course, like so. Cypress has found four anchor tags, but we only want a specific one. Do you remember how to select a specific element within an array that gets returned? We used it in our last lesson, and it is called the EQ command. The last anchor tag is our button, so we'll get it by adding the following to our test. Again, remember that an array's index starts at zero, so if we want the fourth anchor tag, we need to pass in the number three. Now that we have our button, all that is left to do is to click on it. As you can see, we have successfully clicked on our button and navigated to the course page. I wanted to take a moment to remind you of the best practices we recommend when it comes to getting elements. In the second lesson, we stress the importance of using data attributes for your tests. Ideally, they should always be used, but sometimes you are unable to make modifications to the markup. And as a result, you need to do things like this. This is quite brittle and should only be used sparingly. If a lesson is added or removed from our course, our test is going to break since we are relying upon the specific ordering of the elements returned in this array. So remember to use data attributes whenever possible, otherwise your test can be quite brittle and break in the future. Now that we have successfully clicked on our button and navigated to our course page, Let's write an assertion that verifies the button navigates to the correct page. We can do this by writing an assertion that verifies that the URL of our course page is correct like so.
We are using the location command to get the path name, which in our case is the URL of our application. Then we write our assertion to make sure that it equals the correct URL or path. Now it is time for you to put what you have just learned into practice. Write two additional tests, one for each course on the homepage, and verify that the Get Started button links to the correct course page. As a hint, you can copy and paste the test we just wrote and make slight modifications for each course and course page. If you get stuck, the answers are provided in the lesson below.